Look, I'm not saying I have a crystal ball because I don't, but I know having a head start on these big events allowed me to personally prepare my family. I'll share how so you can take the same steps in just a second, including several steps to take with your money. But understand that what you decide to do today could have a huge impact on your life over the coming days and weeks. America is unraveling each day and fast. Unfortunately, I know most Americans will ignore these warning signs and just hope for the best. And by the time they wake up to reality, it will be too late for them. But I don't want that to be you. So if you want the same details I'm sharing with my family about what to expect from this $85 trillion economic super collapse, you need to get access to the information that's inside this envelope now. That's because what's inside this envelope is information you'll never hear being talked about by the president or by members of Congress or by the mainstream media. It's information from me that no other former government insider I know is willing to reveal the way I am. That's because the last thing the elites want is a premature panic from regular people like you. They'd rather try and control the crowd. But I feel a moral obligation to prepare you, even if the truth is hard to hear and frightening. That's why today I'm going to go through three danger zones in our economy that I'm worried about most if I'm right about the super collapse. These are the three danger zones under threat of economic collapse I'm concerned about most, and I'm going to talk about each one now. Danger zone one, America's food supply. According to the CDC's website, a disaster can easily disrupt the food supply at any time. In the event of disaster or emergency, they advise Americans to have at least a three-day supply of food. But have you ever asked yourself, what happens if multiple disasters hit our food supply chain simultaneously? This time last year, around November 2021, you'll recall there were headlines, you know, bare shelves, empty shelves, supply chain breakdown. And it was all true. You, you went to the supermarket. It didn't mean that every shelf was completely bare like, uh, you know, East Germany in the 1950s. But there were, you know, paper goods might not be there or maybe your favorite kind of tomato sauce or, or you know, chicken or whatever it was. There were some things there, but a lot of things weren't there. This is a complex system. It was breaking down. That was very clear. And now we're seeing a second wave of that, what I call supply chain 1.0 from 1989 to 2019 is broken. Uh, there will be a new supply chain. There always are. Supply chains have been around since the Bronze Age, if not earlier. But the new supply chain, what I call supply chain 2.0, will look very different than the old supply chain. Right now, we're in an in-between period where things don't work well. Uh, again, it doesn't mean total chaos, but you know, you still see shortages, you still see higher prices, which are coming from supply chain disruptions. Um, and these things are not easy to fix, but they can be replaced. And that's what I expect to happen. Just look at what's happened so far this year. In early 2022, USA Today reported shortages at grocery stores across the country have grown more acute in recent weeks as Omicron continues to spread and winter storms have piled on. Then, Putin decided to roll Russian tanks into Ukraine, igniting yet another disaster. As the UN told BBC, Russia's invasion of Ukraine could soon cause a global food crisis that may last for years. That's because practically a third of the world's wheat exports come from Russia and Ukraine. Because of intense political tensions in the country, rising prices, and intense work schedules to meet delivery deadlines under the supply chain crunch, I believe it's very likely that we will see a long-haul trucker strike in the next 6 to 12 months. I believe that strike would last two weeks or more. And do you know what will happen when those long-haul truckers don't go to work for a week? Business Insider reported that when that happens, Grocery stores would run out of food in three days. Danger zone number two, America's energy supply. See, even after a trucker strike, the only way the trucks can deliver our food is if they have enough gas to run on. And right now, we're in the middle of the worst energy crisis since the 1970s. And not just because of rising prices at the pump. As you may know, in the aftermath of that oil crisis, our government built something called the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, SPR. For a worst case scenario, we all hope never comes to pass. Over the last 50 years, it's grown steadily from administration to administration, having recently hit 564 million barrels of oil. And then suddenly everything changed. So the United States cut off semiconductor exports to Russia. Not just that, not just as a primary boycott, but as what's called a secondary boycott, which we said to everybody in the world, most pointedly the Chinese, if you make your own semiconductors with our equipment and our technology under license from us, you can't sell that to Russia either. But what people don't realize is that, um, you know, look around your kitchen or any, your, any part of your house or get in a car. A car is basically a, 
a computer on wheels. It has 1,400 semiconductors. It's all semiconductors, 1,400 semiconductors in a typical car. This processed neon gas that powers the lasers that makes the semiconductors, 70% of it comes from a single plant in Odessa, in Ukraine. Now, and Odessa is under siege. So Putin's just gonna say, okay, we can't have semiconductors. You can't have the neon gas. That's gonna shut down the entire global semiconductor industry, which in turn, since that's a, a, an input, is gonna shut down basically all the manufacturing in the world. As NBC wrote, under Biden, U.S. oil reserves to drop by 40%. The article continues, the number will fall to 384.6 million barrels, a level not recorded since 1984. The scary part of this is that the SPR is not actually meant to last this very long. According to one estimate I found before Biden's latest action, it could supply us with oil for about 1.5 years without being replenished. Of course, now that we have 40% less oil, that supply would run out 40% faster. But because of sanctions we imposed on Russia, it's likely that our European allies will run out of oil. When they do, the U.S. will offer to supply them with even more of our oil and natural gas to bail them out. You may think that's far-fetched, but this is exactly what's happening right now. Plus, they've, uh, they've obviously allowed the energy payments to continue. But you can buy Russian oil, and they have to because Europe has put itself in a position where it's going, they're going to freeze in the dark if they don't have, I said oil, yes, but also primarily natural gas. But if they don't have those Russian energy resources, they're going to shut down their industry and people, they're going to have blackouts and people are going to, as they say, freeze in the dark. And while the situation surrounding the way we get our food and energy is bad, it's this next danger zone that keeps me up at night. Danger zone number three, America's medicine supply. Just like trucks need gasoline to deliver our food, the only way our economy runs is if the people who run it, the truckers and everyone else, all have access to necessary drugs and medicine. Fighting the COVID-19 pandemic was just one emergency that taxed the system. But I believe another catalyst event will be breaking the medical system altogether. Based on my research, it will likely be because of the U.S. officially entering a geopolitical conflict. Think about it. We're the world's largest economy. That means we have a bullseye on our back. What second largest world economy do you think might have an interest in taking us down? Of course, I'm talking about China. Sound too hard to believe? Well, did you know we get nearly half of all our penicillin from China? I doubt most Americans realize it, but this was stated publicly in a report published in 2019. I believe a coming conflict with China, it could be another trade war, internal conflict within China, or even a serious conflict militarily between us and China will lead to a major breakdown in the critical drug supply to the U.S.